This video was sponsored by Card Kingdom. You can visit their store by using my referral link in the description below. Hi everyone, I'm Nietzsche Hone, and today is Wednesday, and that means it's time for another Deck History, a series where I trace the development of historically significant magic decks. Most of the time, this means examining a prominent archetype as it changed over time, but sometimes I like to take a deeper dive into a single deck, one that didn't have long-term success in magic, but one that was notable nonetheless. We've done this in the past with decks like Prosbloom and Stasis. And today we're doing another one of those with a look at the Innistrad Block token deck. Before we really get into the video, I do want to say, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, consider doing it so that you can stay aware of future videos. As is usually the case for this series, I ran a poll last week where the viewers decided the topic of this video, and I put two really busted block constructed decks up against one another, and in the end, Innistrad Block constructed tokens defeated Masks Block Rebels pretty handily. Obviously enough, a token deck is one that looks to go wide with tokens and win the game quickly. Since it's no longer a thing today, let me briefly explain what Block Constructed is. Magic sets used to release in what are called blocks. These were a series of sets, usually three of them, that were all set in the same place and told a single story. The first set in the block was usually pretty large, around 300 cards, while the second and third sets were usually significantly smaller, featuring around 150 cards. Mechanically, these blocks also had various recurring themes. So a block constructed format is one that only uses cards from one of these blocks. So Innistrad Block Constructed was a format that featured the three original Innistrad sets, which were Innistrad, Dark Ascension, and Avacyn Restored. The last time we had a block constructed format was during Theros Block, and now the format is entirely defunct. Since we don't have set releases in a block format anymore, we shouldn't expect the format to ever come back either. So, as I said, the topic of this particular video is the tokens deck in that Innistrad block constructed format, which is potentially the most dominant block constructed deck we ever saw, although it didn't exist for very long as various bands ultimately destroyed it, and that's part of what makes it notable. The deck was too good even before Avacyn Restored was released, and key cards in the deck ultimately got banned before the block was ever complete. This also means that the deck got banned out of existence before there was ever a block, Grand Prix, or Pro Tour. Both of these were firsts in the history of block constructed formats. While other block decks had been banned into oblivion, like Masks Block Rebels and Mirrodin Block Affinity, that only went down after premier level events had taken place. All right, without further ado, let's take a look at this deck and discuss what made it so great. Normally in this series, we look at premier level decks, but because we don't have any premier level events to talk about, this video is instead going to focus on decks from Magic Online daily block events, as those were ultimately the only remotely big events where this deck was legal. The very first Magic Online daily events to feature token decks came in early November of 2011, when there were two main variants of the deck, red-white and green-white. Notably, this is a deck that came out when only Innistrad was out from the block, and already the token deck was looking pretty great. Let's take a look at the red variant first. While we're going to see a variety of token decks in this video, the one thing that stays the same for all of them is Intangible Virtue. This card offered an incredibly powerful effect if you could build a deck loaded up with tokens, since it not only gave them an anthem effect, it also gave them vigilance, and that's some pretty amazing value for only two mana, especially when tokens are already inherently something that helps you go wide. Obviously, this red-white token deck ran a lot of cards that made tokens, including Geist Honored Monk, Doom Traveler, and Midnight Haunting. Geist Honored Monk brought two tokens along for the ride and could be quite large in the deck. Doom Traveler died and made a token, and Midnight Haunting just straight up made you two flying tokens. In addition to Intangible Virtue, the deck also used Machaeus the Lunark to take advantage of the deck's ability to go wide. This very early version of the deck didn't go as hard on tokens as you might expect, and overall this is more a red-white aggro deck with a token sub-theme than it is a token deck. The green-white variant of the deck went significantly harder on tokens, though. It ran the same white token-making cards, but adding green gave the deck access to Garrick Relentless and Mayor of Averbrook, both of which were inherently powerful cards that also produced wolf creature tokens. 
Green also allowed the deck to run Parallel Lives, a card that lets you multiply the number of tokens you create. Green also gave the deck access to Gavany Township, which gave you a nice way to take advantage of the deck's ability to go wide. Anytime you can have a land that does big stuff for you, you're getting a pretty awesome advantage. For the first couple of months of the format, these red, white, and green, white token decks were doing really well on Magic Online. However, the decks weren't so dominant that they seemed like a huge problem. However, with the release of the second set in Innistrad block, Dark Ascension, in February of 2012, token decks went from being solid performers in the format to being incredibly powerful. This version of the deck was predominantly black-white. The biggest reason for this increase in power for the token deck was Lingering Souls. This powerful sorcery was a single card that was capable of generating four 1-1 tokens with flying thanks to flashback. So this one card provides multiple bodies to be pumped with Machaeus or Intangible Virtue, and that is downright frightening. This was also a big part of what led the deck to go with black as its second color, since the flashback cost was one and a black. Lingering Souls wasn't the only addition to the deck, though. Soren, Lord of Innistrad, provided another way to make flying tokens, and he could give you an emblem that pumped all of your creatures. Cards like Gather the Townsfolk and Increasing Devotion rounded out the deck's suite of token makers. While the deck was black-white for the most part, the deck also splashed green to retain access to Gavany Township and Garrick Relentless. So, yeah, this deck was insanely streamlined and powerful for only featuring cards from two sets. Every non-land card in the deck was either removal, a card that made creature tokens, or a payoff for making creature tokens, and several of the cards were more than one of those. And the problem was, this block-constructed format didn't have any good way to deal with decks making this many tokens. With such a small card pool, making token decks this strong was a pretty big mistake, especially when there wasn't a way to deal with the tokens effectively. So in the end, these decks were doing far too well on Magic Online, and there was basically no reason not to play the deck in the format since nothing else could really compare. Every Magic Online daily event after the release of Dark Ascension featured at least four token decks in the top eight, and in some of them, literally every deck in the top eight was a token deck. Using the data from these Magic Online events, Wizards of the Coast ultimately decided to take a pretty drastic step. They banned both Intangible Virtue and Lingering Souls, effectively eliminating the token deck from the format. As I noted earlier, this went down even before Avacyn Restored was released. This seems pretty aggressive, given that the format didn't have access to the entire pool of cards that it would have by the time there were block-constructed Pro Tours and Grand Prix. but you have to keep in mind that Wizards of the Coast knew what was in Avacyn Restored at this point, and they knew the deck would only get better with the release of that set. It didn't feature any new cards it hated on the token strategy, and it included Entreat the Angels, a card that is absurdly good at making tokens all ready, so having a deck that can really take advantage of this miracle spell even more would have been too much. Because they didn't want the block pro tour to just be all about the token deck, the ban was necessary and it did succeed in making the format more diverse. So while it was only a single short-lived deck in one block constructed format, the fact that this deck got banned into oblivion so quickly is very notable. It also marked the first time that Wizards ever used Magic Online data, and exclusively Magic Online data, to come to a conclusion about banning cards. This is something that would become a more common trend going forward, all the way up until the modern day, where data from Magic Arena often plays a major role in cards getting banned. So that's the history of the Innistrad Block Tokens deck. If you want to have a say in the topic of next week's video, don't forget to vote in the poll on the community tab. If you want to make sure you catch next week's video and a lot of other content, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. If you want to make sure you're caught up in this series, there should be a playlist for it on your screen shortly. And if you want to go the extra mile in supporting the channel, you can on Patreon. Thanks for watching.